Greetings everyone. This is Dr. Hishwini here. We will be speaking on the topic consumer decision making process. Before we go on to that, let's play a small quiz. I am sure you are all able to guess this particular logo. Yeah, completely right. It is Snapchat. The next logo. Guess it. I am sure you all have seen this in one of the retail mart. This logo is very familiar all around the world. Guess it. Yes, it's right. Walmart. Be ready for the next one. Well, this is one of the bank, leading bank around the world. You guess it right. Which is the logo of this? What is the brand name? Yes, it is HSBC. Next one. Well, this is familiar to everyone. I'm sure you have already guessed it in your mind. Yes, it's WhatsApp. Well, this might be favorite of all the people around the world. Yes, you all guessed it right. It is Tinder. Finest dating app. Oh yeah, I quite know that you just caught the flash of a memory in your mind. And that is Toyota. A world leading manufacturer of cars origin from Japan. Now who is a consumer? A person who purchases the goods and services for personal use or on behalf of his or her family use. So the person is called as consumer. Yeah, we all go to the sale when it is going to be end of season sale, 50% off sale, up to 75%, up to 60%. Yes, we Indian consumers are known for bargaining. Definition of consumer behavior. Consumer behavior is defined as the behavior that consumer display in searching for purchasing, using, evaluating and disposing of those products and services that they expect will satisfy their needs. Here one of the best examples to showcase the kind of advertisement which is so called as gorilla advertisement and dental implantation. Consumer decision making process the main topic that we are all going to discuss about it. Consumer decision making refers to the process under which consumers go through in deciding what to purchase, including problem recognition, information search, evaluation of alternatives, making the decision and post-purchase evaluation. Now, as a consumer, I have a thought. I want to buy a toothpaste. The first thing which comes in my mind, which brand, where, which place, so let's find out further. So yes, this is a flowchart of consumer decision making process starts with need recognition and problem awareness. And the second step goes for information search. Third, evaluation of alternatives. Fourth, purchase. Fifth, post purchase evaluation. Now, well, you know what? I'm hungry. I want to have something which is very delicious. So, I recognized my need that I am hungry. I understood the problem awareness that I am hungry. Now, what is the next thing that I am going to do? If I have a lot of option on my plate, information such, let's see which hotel do I go in Bangalore? Okay, do I go to Halimani or do I go to Albeck or Burger King or McD? or any other place that I would love to go and have and hog nicely and enjoy my time. Information search. How do you go for it? information search? External information search, internal information search, which I'm going to give you a detailed explanation as we go on further. Evaluation of alternatives. Now I'm hungry. Where do I go? What do I eat? Okay, do I need idli bada? Do I need 
dosa, puani parota and paneer curry. Or what I would like to cherish, a paneer fried rice uh, with that Kobe manchuri. So all these are evaluation of alternatives. Finally, happy baby, I want to purchase something which is so delicious. Let me give on the crown to Burger King, Uber Burger. So I go to Burger King and I have the most delicious Uber Burger enjoying the cheesy french fries with delicious milkshake, especially chocolate. Now, so the purchase is being done. What is my post-purchase feeling? Am I a happy consumer or am I a sad consumer? Oh, in the Burger King, I felt the burger was very spicy. I didn't like it. So this is post-purchase evaluation, but there is another face as well. Oh, well, this upper burger was so good. It was so delicious, so cheesy as I was just putting into my mouth. The cheese was just dripping and then the french fries had all over the cheese. That was the most delicious food that I've ever had. So yes, I'm a happy, delighted customer. So this is post-purchase evaluation. Now, let me give you a clear picture how exactly need recognition works. Need recognition refers to the instance where a consumer recognizes that a need or a problem exists that needs to be satisfied of whom a consumer. Need recognition is usually triggered by an internal stimuli on a particular need such as hunger or thirst. What is the external stimuli? Advertisements that I see, that consumers hear and see. So let's take for an example. I saw a girl wearing a beautiful heels and that looked amazing. And she bought it from Mochi. That is an external stimuli. You know what? I have been working and I have been roaming around. I'm so thirsty. Biological needs, internal stimuli. Yes, these are the external stimuli that you can see. Caprese, the one of the leading brand of bags, sugar cosmetics. Yeah, that's what I said. The burger. This is what the external stimuli actually instills the kind of drive for you to go and have it. Chanel. Information search. Once the need is identified, it's time for the consumer to seek information about possible solution to the problem. He or she will search more or less information depending on the complexity of the choices to be made, but also his or her level of involvement. Like for an example, buying pasta requires little information and involves very few a consumer than buying a car. Internal information. This information is already present in the consumer's memory. It comes from the previous experiences he or she had with a product or a brand and the opinion he may have of the brand. Internal information. External information. This is information on a product or a brand received from and obtained by friends or family, by reviews from other consumers. That's information search. Evaluation of alternatives. Yes, I have a lot of things on my plate. Which one do I choose? Evaluate the most suitable to his or her needs and choose the one which basically fulfills them and their satisfaction towards the product services. The higher the level of involvement of the consumers and the importance of the purchases are stronger. The higher the number of solutions the consumer will consider to be important. Yes, I want to buy a car. So, which is a brand that basically I can go for? Porsche? Well, Mercedes it is. Or Rolls Royce. Well, let me choose which one I want to go for. So, purchase is the final decision. Decision will depend on the information and the selection made in the previous step based on the perceived value, products, features and capabilities that are important. 
but his or her consumer buying decision process and his or her decision process may also depend on or be affected by such things as the quality of his or her shopping experience or of the store, online shopping website, the availability of promotion, a written policy or a good terms and conditions of sale. Finally, after I buy, am I satisfied, am I not satisfied, am I happy about the products and services, am I unhappy about the products and services, that's basically post-purchase evaluation. Post-purchase evaluation may have important consequences for a brand. A satisfied customer is very likely to become a loyal and regular customer, especially for everyday purchase with low level of involvement such as fast-moving consumer food, FMCG or consumer packaged goods, CPG, a loyalty which is a major source of revenue for the brand when you combine all purchases made by customer throughout his or her entire life called lifetime customer value. Well, on the other hand, the consumer might postpone the purchase because the requirements were not met by the product. There are a few reasons for the same, price, quality, quantity, discount and offers, etc. Well, thank you so much for patiently listening to me. Let's have a small quiz. The buying process starts when the buyer recognizes A, option A, product or service, option B, shopper market, option C, need or problem, Option D, money or status. I'm sure you all guessed right if you have heard my lecture appropriately. So yes, the answer is C. If performance meets consumer expectation, the consumer is Option A, satisfied. Option B, dissatisfied. Option C, delighted. Option D, happy. Yes, you all have guessed right. Option A, satisfied. Now, CDM stands for, what does it stand for? Option A, Consumer Development Model. Option B, Consumer Decision Mix. Option C, Consumer Decision Making. Option D, Consumer Development Matrix. Well, yes, you all have guessed it right. It's Option C, Consumer Decision Making Process. Now, I'm ending my session and thank you so much for patiently listening to me. Have a great day.